My name is Jessica, and I'm here to debunk the shit out of Plandemic. Okay, first of all, I'm just a nobody. I graduated cum laude from a state school. My degree is in theater, but I'm no dummy. And after about 18 hours of research on the claims made in this ridiculous documentary, I can say confidently, without a doubt, Dr. Judy Mikovits is full of shit. Doing some basic Googling was enough to figure out that Dr. Mikovits and the claims made in Plandemic are, frankly, bull hockey. If you don't already know what I'm talking about, good. Leave this video now and maintain your peace of mind and faith in humanity. Get out now. In general, there are a lot of things that stand out to me about this video. The biggest has got to be the lack of sources. They don't identify anyone speaking or any piece of footage they use. I could also dress up in scrubs and say shit into a camera. Also, doctors aren't immune to being idiots or attention-seeking, power-hungry hacks who dishonor the very field in which they claim to hold expertise. So, why am I doing this? Well, I'm on lockdown, uh, I've been furloughed, and I have way too much time on my hands. But also, I've recently seen this 27-minute trailer making the rounds on Facebook. People I consider to be, at the very least, not stupid are sharing it around and talking about how a lot of the claims that are made in it have some merit. And that is a huge red flag. This documentary is dumb to say the least and dangerous to say the most. It casts doubt on our institutions of science, medicine, and education during a time when these institutions are super important to keeping as many people alive as possible. Also, I used to be the kind of person who would totally fall for this type of garbage. In my mid-twenties, I was into all kinds of conspiracy-related deep state New World Order bullshit. If you fell for the claims made in Plandemic, you're not alone. These conspiracy nuts are good at what they do. But there's good news. You can change! It seems like the overall suggestion of the film is that COVID-19 was created by scientists in a lab so that, you know, they could make money off of a vaccine that they distributed to a worldwide population of sheeple. Sheeple. And that is ridiculous for many reasons, which I will get into right now. I'll be providing resources on screen from time to time throughout the video, as well as in the good old video description down below, as they like to say in YouTube land. I strongly suggest that you follow up on this information yourself. Okay, let's do this. One, Dr. Judy Mikovits has been called one of the most accomplished scientists of her generation. Oh yeah? By who? Because I couldn't find it. I mean, I googled and I changed my search terms several times and I used quotation marks and I never found a single source of anyone ever except for this movie saying that she was one of the most accomplished scientists of her generation. So if someone could get me like a link, that'd be good. Two, her explosive paper was a piece of crap. While working for the Whittemore Peterson Institute for Neuroimmune Disease as a research director, Mikovits published a paper called Detection of an Infectious Retrovirus XMRV in Blood Cells of Patients with Chronic Fatigue Syndrome in the publication Science in 2009. It suggests that chronic fatigue syndrome was caused by a retrovirus found in mice called XMRV. The trouble is, no other scientist could duplicate her results, including the other authors of her own study which is an important part of the scientific method and necessary for adopting data or results as fact. Furthermore, upon investigation, it became clear that Mikovits' testing methods were shoddy and that her samples had been contaminated in the lab. Furthermore, she used misleading data and even just made some of it up. Because of this, science issued a full retraction of her paper in December of 2011. This was the beginning of a very long fall from grace for Dr. Mikovits, which you'll hear more about soon. Three. Who is this Mickey Willis guy? Mickey Willis is a former actor slash model slash theater nerd who founded the Elevate Films Production Company, which produces feature films, among other things. He says he was inspired to create the company after 9-11 and that he was, quote, inside the Twin Towers just before they fell, unquote, and organized civilians to volunteer at Ground Zero for three days. Apparently this is true, but I wasn't willing to get past a paywall to confirm it. Other film credits include The Shadow Effect about harnessing the secret superpowers of your shadow, which I assume is an allusion to Carl Jung's theory of the shadow self, 
or possibly one of my favorite Tool songs. The film features Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson, who are not exactly the world's most credible folks. But that's a whole other video. Be brave. About filmmaker Daniel Northcott's struggle with leukemia after he brought home a cursed bone from an ancient Mayan burial chamber? Am I reading that right? And Impact! Which is another documentary about finding your secret superpowers. There isn't much out there on that one. He's also made a series of short films about things like The Secret and the supposed end of the world in 2012 as predicted by the Mayan calendar. Let's just say this guy has a long track record of delving face first into pseudoscience. Four. Mikovits was held in jail with no charges. On November 18th, 2011, Dr. Judy Mikovits was arrested on two felony charges, possession of stolen property and unlawful taking of computer data in Ventura County, California. This was related to a civil suit her former employer, the Whittemore Peterson Institute, had filed against her. She was fired from WPI when they found out she was a hack. They also ordered a restraining order against her to stop her from destroying the data. The charges were later dismissed partly because Harvey Whittemore of WPI was charged with illegally making campaign donations and lying to the FBI. But they were dismissed without prejudice, which means WPI can file a related complaint in the future. Also, the more I learn about the WPI, like, the weirder it gets, man. Like, <laughs> Judy Mikovits was a volunteer bartender at a yacht club when she was hired to be the research director of the WPI. Like, some person came up to the bar and said they knew someone who was looking for a research director, and she hadn't worked in the field in five years. Like, what? Five. Dr. Fauci delayed an AIDS drug that caused thousands of people to die. According to New Yorker Magazine writer Michael Spector, as written about on NPR's website, quote, in the 1980s, during the height of the AIDS epidemic, Fauci worked with activists to amend the way the government handles clinical drug trials. This policy shift increased the number of patients who had access to experimental HIV AIDS treatments and saved countless lives. This new system for AIDS treatment basically forced people to realize that you can't run drug trials and decide what to do with patients without ever consulting patients. Long story short, he actually talked to ACT UP activists to end outdated drug trial rules that prevented patients from being able to take more than one experimental drug at a time. He introduced the idea of parallel tracking, or taking data on patients receiving multiple treatments who otherwise would not be eligible for trials. Jeffrey Levi of the National Center for Biotechnology Information says, quote, Fauci was probably the most critical player in the transformation of parallel track from an idea advocated by outsiders to one embraced by the federal public health establishment. Unquote. Six. Whoever said anything about mandatory vaccines? That's some big conspiracy theory BS that's been going around the interwebs for a long time. If you've ever delved into the conspiracy web, you've heard this one before. Mandatory vaccines will create a plague! Mandatory vaccines will inject RFID chips into everyone! Yeah, my cousin told me that, uh, you know, these mandatory vaccines, they're gonna make everyone gay so that they can, uh, you know, curb procreation and, and make Agenda 21 happen for like the New World Order. <laughs> Seven. Mikovits says the coronavirus family of viruses was manipulated in a lab. Every time there's a new disease, the conspiracy web goes crazy over alleged connections to nearby labs. That's BS, here's why. It came from bats. The closest known relative of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is a bat virus named RATG13 which was kept at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Oh, can you hear them? That's the conspiracy. This may sound fishy on the surface, but according to Professor Edward Holmes of the University of Sydney, RATG13 was sampled from a different province of China from where COVID-19 first appeared. And it would have taken an average of 50 years of evolutionary change for RATG13 to mutate into SARS-CoV-2. If the virus was genetically engineered, it would have to be made up of pieces of viruses that already exist, and SARS-CoV-2 looks nothing like viruses we already know about. According to Nigel McMillan, an immunologist from the Menzies Health Institute, Queensland, the changes to the COVID-19 virus make no sense from a genetic engineering standpoint. They actually make it less infectious than SARS. Furthermore, he says, quote, no system exists in the lab to make some of the changes found in the virus. Eight. 
Mikovits alleges that Dr. Fauci is somehow connected to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Dr. Fauci is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Together with the National Institute of Health, it funded research on coronaviruses in the Wuhan lab in the amount of $7.4 million. This is as close as I can get in terms of a legitimate connection between the two. And like, yeah, of course they funded that research. It makes sense. The Wuhan Institute of Virology already had the bat coronavirus we were just talking about. So yeah, they were testing it. They were doing experiments. And that makes sense. They've been studying coronaviruses in China for like two decades. And that doesn't seem suspicious to me. Nine. Medicare pays $13,000 for COVID-19 diagnoses and $39,000 for anyone who gets put on a ventilator. Snopes.com calls this a mixture. On an April 9th episode of the Ingram Angle, which is already problematic, Minnesota State Senator Dr. Scott Jensen said, Right now, Medicare has determined that if you have a COVID-19 admission to the hospital, you'll get paid $13,000. If that COVID-19 patient goes on a ventilator, you get $39,000, three times as much. A spokesperson for the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, so that there is no set amount paid out to hospitals for diagnosing or treating COVID-19. Snope cited an April 7th article published by the Kaiser Family Foundation as the closest match to Jensen's figures they could find. The article used average figures from 2017 for hospital admissions for similar diseases. Quote, for less severe hospitalizations, we use the average Medicare payment for respiratory infections and inflammations with major comorbidities or complications in 2017, which was $13,297. For more severe hospitalizations, we use the average Medicare payment for a respiratory system diagnosis with ventilator support for greater than 96 hours, which was $40,218." End quote. Guess what? If you got coronavirus, your insurance would have to pay a gigantic amount of money to the hospital to take care of you. That is just how our system works, unfortunately. And so, yeah, it makes sense that they pay out big sums of money for taking care of people who have a deadly disease. If you end up in the hospital from COVID-19, that's a big deal. Like, you don't just go because you're coughing. This is not news. Everyone knows that insurance is ridiculously expensive, that treatments are ridiculously expensive, hospital stays are ridiculously expensive. This is not news. I don't understand why this is a big deal. Ten. Ebola couldn't infect humans until lab scientists taught it how. I, I just, whew. There have been countless conspiracies about Ebola and George Soros and the Gates Foundation, among other usual suspects. A big one is that the Gates has funded a bioweapons lab in Sierra Leone, but no such lab exists. Lab scientists didn't have to teach Ebola how to infect humans, just like they didn't have to teach H1N1 or SARS or the common cold how to infect humans. The Ebola virus hitches a ride on proteins that snap onto receptors on the membranes of a cell. When the cell envelops that protein for nutrition, the virus gets in and starts replicating. I honestly have no idea what Mikovits is talking about here. I couldn't find anything about scientists manipulating Ebola in a lab. 11. I'm out of fingers. There's only five more. Don't worry, we're almost there. Mikovits alleges that in early 2019, Italy got an untested version of the flu vaccine that contained four strains, including H1N1. Ooh, sounds scary. After doing some research, I assume she's talking about the ATIV vaccine. It was tested, along with two other vaccines. Yes, an H1N1 flu was one of the strains. If you got the flu vaccine for the 2019-2020 flu season, then you got inoculated against an H1N1 virus. It's one of the four strains commonly referred to as influenza A. This is not a big deal. Also, what does this have to do with COVID-19? 12. Hydroxychloroquine has been covered up by the fake news media even though it's an effective treatment for COVID-19. Okay, so. Hydroxychloroquine is a drug used to treat malaria and autoimmune diseases. Side effects include irreversible visual changes in normal heart rhythm, muscle weakness, nerve pain, hypoglycemia, and worsening psoriasis. Various studies over the course of March and April of this year have yielded mostly inconsistent or statistically insignificant results. Say that three times fast. Inconsistent or statistically insignificant. Inconsistent or statistically insignificant. Typically, the studies suffer from problems like small sample sizes, a lack of a control group, and or a lack of control over variables. 
A more recent study conducted by scientists at the Columbia VA Healthcare System in South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, and the University of Virginia of 368 patients showed that taking hydroxychloroquine actually caused higher death rates in patients than those who did not. 13. Okay, this one's kind of a doozy. Drug companies are suppressing something called ceramin, which can give kids with autism a voice, a life. So I found something called ceramin. Ceramin is a dietary supplement that seems to generally treat pain. It has turmeric in it, which has anti-inflammatory properties. I couldn't find much more than that, but I did find quite a bit about a similar supplement called curcumin. Curcumin comes from turmeric, so it too has anti-inflammatory properties. It was studied by scientists in 2015 in rats to see if it would restore neurological and behavioral changes associated with autism. First, they gave the rats autism by injecting them with propanoic acid, which caused neurological, sensory, behavioral, biochemical, and molecular deficits, which were assessed as characteristic of autism spectrum disorder. Not sure how you determine that rats have autism, much less that their characteristics are somehow analogous to human children, but I'm not a scientist. They then gave them curcumin orally for 27 days. Ultimately, their study showed that curcumin restored the rat's core and associated symptoms of rat autism. I mean, that's cool, but I couldn't find it replicated. Also, this has never been tested in humans. The point of the study was to show that it could possibly be developed to be a treatment for humans in the future, maybe. So this one hits home for me particularly because I've worked with children on the autism spectrum for uh, quite a few years. The autism community has definitely been taken advantage of by people with all kinds of different snake oils proclaiming that they have a cure for autism. There is no cure for autism right now. Vaccines do not cause autism. The families of the children I see would love nothing more than to find something that would allow their children to live more typical or easier lives. And the fact that there are people out there like Dr. Mikovits who spread this fucking bullshit is super fucking frustrating to me. 14. Buckle up, kiddos. This is a windy one. The flu vaccine increases the odds of getting COVID-19 by 36% according to a study of military personnel. Oh my god, I got the flu vaccine. I'm gonna get the Rona. The study she's referencing is influenza vaccination and respiratory virus interference among Department of Defense personnel during the 2017-2018 influenza season by Greg G. Wolf. This study followed 9,469 military personnel, some of whom got the 2017-2018 flu shot and some of whom didn't, to see if people who got the flu shot were more susceptible to other respiratory infections. The study does not seem to specify which coronavirus was used in the study, but as it was conducted two flu seasons ago, it could not have been COVID-19. COVID-19 is a novel virus, meaning we've never seen it before. The term coronavirus refers to a large group of RNA viruses that cause respiratory infections in humans and animals. Many common colds are coronaviruses. Your dog has probably had a coronavirus. The study found that people who got the flu vaccine were more likely to get coronavirus. 7.8% of people who had the vaccine tested positive for a coronavirus at some point during the study, compared to 5.8% of people who did not get the vaccine. Is 7.8 36% higher than 5.8? Yes, but I think this number sounds scarier than it actually is. 36% higher than 1 is 1.36, not 36. Another similar study found no association between getting the flu vaccine and getting a coronavirus. Also, correlation does not mean causation. Just because this one study found that some people who got the flu vaccine had more of a chance of getting a coronavirus than others doesn't mean that that is causal. It doesn't mean that flu vaccines cause you to get coronaviruses. Also, to be explicitly clear, this study is not talking about COVID-19. COVID-19 did not even exist during the time the study was conducted. 15. Wearing a mask is making you sick because of your own reactivated coronavirus expressions. I can't even. That makes no sense. I just, it doesn't. There, no. So I think what she's trying to say is that if you have like the coronavirus germ and you put a mask on and it's like stuck in your mucous membrane and then you're wearing a mask and you <clears throat> and then now the coronavirus germ is in the mask and then you breathe it in and then this time it like doesn't get stuck in your throat and it like gets into your system now you've gotten sick from it when you wouldn't have if you weren't wearing a mask. It's just, 
It is such utter nonsense. I, I don't even know where to start with this one. Like, wear a mask. You should be wearing a mask if you, <laughs> if you leave your house, you should wear a mask. If you're going to be within six feet of people, you should be wearing a mask. You know, if you go to the grocery store or the pharmacy, you need to be wearing a mask. Not necessarily just to protect yourself, but to protect other people from you. Don't be a douche. Fucking wear a mask. <laughs> and finally, 16. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. It's so dumb. Okay, okay. <laughs> Closing the beach is really bad because there's healing microbes in the sand, soil, and water. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. If you get coronavirus, you can just go to the beach and just like <laughs> just rub <laughs> just rub yourself in the sand. Rub yourself. <laughs> people drinking bleach was bad people are gonna be fucking injecting ocean water because of this fucking lady <laughs> oh my god in conclusion yeah that video was full of shit and i have a funny feeling when the full documentary comes out it will also be full of shit it was so full of shit that i an average person was able to tear it the hell apart with less than 24 hours worth of research imagine what an actual journalist could do please do not share pandemic or post it anywhere you can share this video though please let me know in the comments if i fucked anything up and sorry not sorry i will be deleting comments on this video that are dumb trolly or just plain false it's 2020 that is my prerogative and that's just the way it is bye who is this Mickey Willis guy? Who is this Millie Wickis? Millie Wickis. <laughs>